Each day, from the moment we wake up, we have a chance to put on our spiritual armor. So let's put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Prayer throughout our day arms us for all we will face. Life isn't easy, but with God, it can be good. Among a first century Roman soldier's gear was a broad leather belt that kept everything in place and was at hand for battle. It had special hooks and holders that held a sword and it had places for food and water. A soldier could rest a shield and a breastplate on that belt. And that left the soldier's arms free to wield a sword or to throw a rock or shoot an arrow. A soldier in battle probably had some mix of fear and security. Fear from the dangers that were ahead, but security from the armor that was protecting him. Like a soldier, we can walk out the door each day with certain things in our belt. What we have on our belt makes all the difference. Now, I'm not carrying around a literal breastplate and a sword, but the armor of God is something that I can take with me. In the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how to pray for protection over our thoughts, over our heart, our hands, our feet, and everything about us. Because there's a battle happening around us every day. And what we keep in our belt for that battle can make all the difference. The enemy easily whisks his way into our lives. He's the one who tells us that we aren't good enough, that I screwed up so badly that there's no hope for me. And all of that is not true. The belt of truth acts as a barrier of protection against all the little lies that we hear. When we acknowledge that there's a battle happening in our hearts and minds, we can begin to retrain the way that we think and the way that we experience the world. It can be confusing to know what the truth is because there's so much information. There's so many people spouting their opinions around us all the time. But God wants to give us clarity. Jesus said, I am the truth. He didn't just say it either. He loved unconditionally. He healed people. He taught us how to be close to our Father. So truth isn't just a thing. For us in our faith, it's a person. It's Jesus. So walking with the belt of truth is walking with Jesus into our battles. He will fully arm us. Listen to this from Ephesians chapter 6. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done it all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. The belt of truth is the first piece of armor. It holds everything in place. To arm ourselves, we need to start with the idea that our faith in Jesus is true. It's not just talking to the clouds when we pray. It's not just hearing about another guy when you read the Gospels. It's not just another thing that happened in history. The truth is that Jesus is the Son of God who became a human being to save us from our sins and to be with us in our daily battles. And those battles might be with self-doubt or loneliness or insecurity, but whatever it is, it's happening inside of us all the time. We deal with it in different ways. And this passage is encouraging us to recognize those battles and to turn to Jesus with them because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And only through him can we come to the Father. Only through him can we be saved from our sins and in an eternity apart from God. Like the Roman soldier's belt, our belt of truth sets us apart. It identifies us as children of God and followers of Jesus. Truth is foundational to our identity in Christ. So here are some very practical ways to carry the belt of truth into your daily life. You're taking a test. The opportunity to cheat is right there in front of you. But the belt of truth reminds you to live with integrity. So you keep your eyes on your own paper. You're alone in your room. Something comes up on your screen that you know you shouldn't be looking at. The belt of truth helps you to close the window, to get up, 
and to walk around to escape the temptation. You have a significant other, but there's another person at school who's clearly putting out signals. You could just give in because you feel it too, but the belt of truth doesn't let you talk yourself into being unfaithful in your relationship. You don't feel like you have any friends, that no one cares about you, so you start to have bad thoughts about hurting yourself. The belt of truth brings you back to who you are at your core, a child of God. Your father cares about you deeply and has a fierce love for you. These are just small examples of the battles that you have each day. Everyone's lives are different, but the belt of truth that we're talking about wearing is repeating the truth to you when you need to hear it most. Because all, we all need to be reminded of the truth from time to time. You know Dory from Finding Nemo, Forgetful Fish? Dory is the one with short-term memory loss, right? We meet her in Finding Nemo, and she helps the clownfish Marlin find his son Nemo, and they go all across the ocean. Well, in the sequel, Finding Dory, it's Dory's turn to find someone herself. And she wants to find her parents, but of course, she can't seem to remember much about them. But throughout the movie, it comes back little by little, and her life comes back to her, and Marlin's along again to help. But Dory gets confused easily. She needs to be reminded of things. So with the help of friends, she eventually makes it back to her parents. And when she does, she discovers something incredible. Dory's been gone from home since she was a little fish. And her parents back then recognized her wandering and her lack of memory, so they set up this system of shells. The shells were like breadcrumbs that spanned out from their home in all directions to lead her back. Well, one day she lost track of the shells and she never made it home. And then after she disappeared, her parents didn't give up. They continued to lay out the shells every day without fail, loyally, lovingly laying out a path for her to find her way back home. She needed a reminding of who she was, where she belonged. And so day after day passed, year after year, but her parents kept laying out the shells until one day she remembered and she returned. We all need help remembering the truth. We all have a little bit of Dory in us. And so our father lays out the shells, but the truth is right there for us. And yet sometimes we need help seeing it. We're going to talk more tonight in our small groups about how to be reminded of that truth. Listen, the belt of truth might sound like a lofty idea, but it's really a practical one because there aren't very many things that you can take with you wherever you go. But the belt of truth is one of those things. As the spiritual battle happens inside of you, realize that you've got someone walking into action with you. Jesus isn't a lofty idea. He's the truth, the way, and the life. And he's the one giving you the armor of God. So suit up these next few weeks. God is going to prepare you for battle. Draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. So stand fast with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. There's a battle that's going on around us all the time. We can't see it, but the forces of good and evil are battling for your thoughts, mind, body, heart, and soul. The good news is that you have power in this fight. You have spiritual authority to call on the power of God. It may feel like you don't have control over a lot of things in your life, but you have control over how you arm yourself. So how can you arm yourself for the daily battles in your head and heart? One way we're going to experience today is the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. This prayer acknowledges the battle that's happening. When we pray to St. Michael, we ask for help from God and the legions of angels who are on our side fighting spiritual battles each day. We'll tell you more about this prayer when we gather together at the end of the night.